first if you create let's say you will use this memory location first the one then then you will not use two you will use the second memory locations so let's say you store 10 value 10 here okay then you have stored value 20 here correct and you have a link from this to this welcome back to uncommon geeks myself asanta i hope you all doing well I don't know there's a video series where we're discussing about data structure and algorithm. I've already made one introduction video. I've clearly explained how difficult or how painful the data structures and algorithm for front-end developers and how this is a series is going to be. Please watch the introduction video if you are not watched so that you'll be more prepared mentally when coming to this video. Okay. So what is this video is about? So this video is about introduction to linked list. Okay. So one important trivia I'll tell. Actually JavaScript, it doesn't have a linked list of its own. Okay. What do I mean by that? So why JavaScript doesn't have a linked list of its own? Somewhere in the video, I'm going to decode that. So this is also one of the very important interview questions. So please do watch the video till the end. Okay. Without wasting further time, let's get started with the linked list introduction. Okay. I've created a, I've created a small presentation. Okay. To show uh, about the linked list. So I'm just starting with that. So linked list is a linear data structure in which elements are not stored at a contiguous memory location. The elements in a linked list are linked using the pointers. So this definition is not mine as most of you guess. This I've taken from the gigs for gigs and this is a typical definition anybody would write similar. So since they have read by already many so I tried taking it from something all the credits to gigs for gigs. So now this is what is linked list. Okay. In very simple words. So you have a, a memory chunks, okay, but they are not in a contiguous location. They can be accessed using the linked list. How? I'm going to explain in, in a while, okay? Next. So why linked list? Correct? So you know what is linked list, at least basics now. Now, why linked list? Linked list offers some important advantage over other linear data structures. Unlike array, they are a dynamic structures, resizable at runtime. Also, the insertion and deletion operations are efficient and easily implemented. Okay. Why this is? Why they are better than are in some cases? Let me explain you that. Okay. So, so this is a, a, a sketch that I've already prepared as some uh, uh, rectangles for you to represent the memory locations. Okay. So here, if you see, we have one, two, three, four, five. Let's say we have five memory locations. As you all know, array is a contiguous memory allocation. Correct? Array means you have a chunk of block already allocated. There are dynamic arrays, but mostly arrays are static. So you would use array when you know the size of whatever you are processing. Correct. Let's say the number of students in a class or number of employees in an org, they are not dynamic, they're static. You know, whenever they grow, then probably you will increase the arrays. That's how it is done. Arrays are generally picked for the static size. Correct. So now let's say you have an array and you needed a five memory location for the array. What would the compiler do or how generally execution works is the, the compiler or the system would look for five memory locations that are continuously available. Let's say int, I think it is eight bytes. So four no values means 32 bytes. So anywhere 32 bytes are readily available, then that particular chunk is allocated for the array. So what is the advantage? So even before the program starts execution, the memory location allotted. So it is very fast because you don't, you don't have to look for the location, correct? Whereas linked list, so let's say it needs now Actually, the linked list has nothing called a predefined size. It's going to be dynamic. So wherever the space is available, it will be keep picking that. Correct. So, so linked list can better utilize the memory compared to the array. So there are disadvantages too that I'm going to explain in a while. So look at this one. Let's say there are five memory locations. Okay. So like I said, if array wanted now five memory locations, you have only five locations here. Out of which the second location is already picked by somebody. Okay, if second location is already picked by some, some other processing, now array can be created either for one location, like one element array or three element array. You cannot create five element array, correct? So now, so now, but you have to utilize the memory well, correct? Because you, you cannot leave the memory like that. You have to utilize it well. So what you will do, you will create a linked list. So linked list, if you create, let's say you will use this memory location first, the one, then then you will not use two. You will use the second memory locations. So let's say you store 10 value 10 here. Okay. Then you have stored value 20 here. Correct. And you have a link from this to this. And then you have a link from this to this. Then you have a link from this to this. Okay. Then let's say due to some operations, the memory location two got free. Okay. So in that case, let's say, let me decolor it. So let's say due to some reason, uh, this one also become free. So let me give some gray color. So due to some reason, the memory location two also become free. What you can do in that case from five, you can link back to two. Okay. 
and you can store some memory let's say 40 50 60 some number you can store here as well okay guys if not for anything at least for my effort to do this drawing or creating this one you should please like my videos and subscribe to my channel and common geeks okay now please please do that if you're not already done yeah, so that will definitely motivate me to make make more good content okay so now so if you look internally so one three four five and two it looks like quite jumbled correct but from the program perspective you see we don't know what is happening in the inside or in the hardware correct but we know what is we only know that all memory locations whatever we are requesting is available to us correct so one three four five two we are able to access that and write the code correct so that is the beauty so anywhere the memory is available so linked list can actually go and grab that memory and store the values correct so that is the beauty of linked list now i was telling one point where the linked list is is not a data structure or typically how linked list is persona linked list person in other language and javascript is different why see javascript uh, or let's take an example of java or c++ where the programs are written in a compilers correct um, the in in the any editor and they directly interact with the hardware with the, in java there may be some middle engine but technically they directly interact with the system hardware correct c has a c compiler which will interact with the memory java has um, uh, java java c etc which will interact with the uh, device compiler or the system hardware directly but javascript is not like that javascript runs on a browser correct now i run generally with the help of node server but java is prepared to run on a browser correct browser is a software so browser is a software has access to the hardware but javascript as a programming language has no direct access to hardware correct so how javascript can get the memory location and try to link it that doesn't happen so this is very very important concept you have to remember in javascript all the data structure operation we do are kind of a mimicking the behavior because finally javascript everything is object in javascript correct so even the linked list has to convert into an uh, object in javascript to work well so i'm going to explain that now how it is going to look like in javascript okay now let's go back to the presentation see this is a typical singly linked list structure so we have a value we have a link you already saw this from a sketch example so link is one in this case the value is 10 so link is 20 in this case and the uh, link is 3 in this case and the value is 30 value is 20 correct so that goes on every node has two parts in single link singly linked list one is the value another is the link so now this first node has pointing to the second so link part of the first node will be holding the value 20 value part holding the 10 so if i had to draw in a similar fashion you where have you saw in powerpoint correct so now in this case we have first one memory location is one value is 10 okay next i'm drawing another block where we have a value of 20 correct and a memory location of 2 so now this 10 is uh, so value is 10 the link is 1 so now this 10 value and this next low node links which is 2 are interlinked okay so due to which whenever you are trying to access this the uh, next value from this node you will be able to access it i'm going to show that also in a while in with, with respect to object notation how we can access that okay so but in very simple words as you saw every node has a value and a link in singly linked list okay so how it will become uh, the entire link list so as you can see here so we have a data and the next is having the link of this node and we have a data again next is having the link of this it goes on until when the next is null it's an end of a linked list so next is null is the end of the next i mean that node which doesn't have any next node is the end of linked list the head we generally use for head we generally use for uh, accessing the first node okay so there has to be somewhere we need to start so we use the head node and whenever the last node is null then there is no longer a linked list so this is these are the concept that has to be there in your mind now let's decode the object part of linked list okay see now what you saw we have a in linked list what we have we have a element or a value correct so we have an element so let's say the element has a storing a value of 10 next what we had we had a link property or next property next basically here points to link let me name it link only okay now the link should point to the next element correct so here also if you go there is another element 20 and this will have another link correct now this link points to another element element 30 correct element 30 again we have a link property correct 
So this process goes on. So end of the day, you are trying to mimic just this as a part of link list. You are not creating a typical link list that happens in other programming languages like where this link will be actually holding a memory location of the next node. Correct. That is not happening in JavaScript because JavaScript is an interpreter programming language. It is not directly interacting with the hardware. So at end of the day, everything is object in JavaScript. So you are trying to decode this or implement this as a part of link list. Okay. Please, please be careful about this point. Okay. Most don't know this and they think it is still holding the memory under the hood. Yes. Under the hood, every time whenever node is created, it is allocated with a memory. But actually, whenever you are programming, or whenever you're implementing JavaScript side, say all you're doing is this compiler. Even now, if let's say you create a variable called let x, compiler will allocate a memory with the help of an hardware. Correct. Let's say, for example, take an example of Google Chrome. Google Chrome has a compilation engine called V8. V8 is written in C++. So C++ JavaScript code will be compiled by C++. C++ internally interacts with the system hardware to allocate a memory for that variable. Correct. So this is a two-step two, two -step process. So um, memory will be allocated uh, under the hood we may be having some uh, memory allocated for this but on top layer or finally what we as a developers are implementing is just this okay let's decode how to do this step by step in the upcoming videos okay that's all for this video if you like this video please do like this video on youtube channel because i have a bigger ambition of making an entire series about direction algorithm which will be helping for a lot of candidates to push their barriers and crack interviews at a very big firms okay i can do only that i can do that only if i get a good motivation from you all so like the videos do not forget to subscribe to uncommon gifts that's my humble request share these videos with your friends let them also get benefited thank you so much catch you next video